Hello, everyone. I shall be talking about femtosecond laser assisted stromal augmentation for keratoconus. I have no financial interest to disclose. Keratoconus is a non inflammatory disorder characterized by corneal thinning and forward protrusion. The common options for visual improvement include contact lenses, intracorneal ring segment, and various corneal replacement surgeries. Collagen crosslinking effectively strengthens stromal collagen, which helps arrest or slow down the progression of keratoconus. Midstromal transplantation of Bowman's layer has also shown to be effective in arresting the progression of keratoconus and inducing some flattening. Femtosecond assisted intrastromal uh, lenticular implantation with accelerated crosslinking has also been shown to be effective. In our study, we basically look at the outcomes of intrastromal implantation of cross-linked lenticule in eyes with moderate keratoconus. We had 12 eyes of 11 patients with a mean age of 24.9 years. Regarding the donor lenticule preparation, the donor cornea was mounted on the artificial chamber, followed by alcohol-assisted removal of the corneal epithelium. The Zima Z6 femtosecond laser was used to prepare a 8 millimeter diameter lenticule of 100 micron thickness with 150 degrees edges. This layer also included the Bowman's layer. The donor lenticule was soaked in riboflavin 0.1% for 20 minutes, following which UVA exposure was performed 9 milliwatt per centimeter square for 10 minutes. In the patient's eye, under topical anesthesia, the femtosecond laser was used to create a 9 millimeter diameter pocket at 200 micron step. It had a nasal 2 millimeter opening and a temporal 5 millimeter opening. The donor lenticule was implanted using a micro forceps and then unfolded and positioned. At the end, a bandage contact lens was placed along with topical antibiotics. Postoperatively, the patients received topical antibiotic for a week topical prednisolone acetate uh, for about next six weeks in tapering doses, along with topical lubricating eye drops. This is one of the cases uh, at one month follow-up showing the uh, centrally placed intrastromal lenticule. That's the anterior segment OCT showing the lenticule at 200 microns depth, measuring 100 microns in thickness. This is the corneal tomography showing the pre and post lenticule uh, maps. You can see the difference map, there is a thickness, uh, there is a central flattening of about four to four and a half diopters. And on the anterior segment OCD, the lenticule uh, has increased the corneal thickness by about 100 microns. <laughs> There's another case, pre and post lenticule, the cone has become more central following the implantation. And that's the difference map, again, showing uh, some amount of central flattening and superior stiffening. Again, the difference map showing an increase in the thickness by about 104 microns. If we look at the high order aberrations, we find that both the total high order aberration and the coma show a reduction uh, post lenticule implantation. That's the overall clinical details. It's a busy slide, but the uh, if we look at the results, pre-op and post lenticule, the, there is a slight improvement in the best spectacle corrected visual acuity by one line. The pachymetry definitely shows a, stati a statistically significant uh, increase in the corneal thickness, and there's a slight reduction in the corneal aberrations. Now, basically what this study showed us that the donor lenticule can be easily prepared using the femtosecond laser. Corneal crosslinking possibly strengthens the collagen and reduces the amount of keratocytes, thereby reducing the risk of stromal rejection. Uh, the pocket can be created in eyes with keratoconus without any complications. The intrastromal implantation increases the corneal thickness, normalizes the central corneal keratometry without any negative impact on the visual acuity. The corneal clarity is maintained during the follow-up without any evidence of stromal rejection or progression of keratoconus. What about the role of topography-guided photorefractive keratectomy? Uh, we did perform uh, topo-guided PRK in some of the cases. This is one patient, which uh, this is preoperative, and best corrected visual acuity was 2040. Underwent uh, lenticule implantation, following which you can see there is an increase in the corneal thickness, 
normalization of the central characterometry. Uh, the best corrected visual acuity did improve by one line, and that's the topographic guided PRK map. Uh, the planning, and uh, this was also combined with accelerated cross-linking uh, for nine milliwatts for 10 minutes. And that's the post-operative top topography. You can see that there's a significant reduction in the uh, corneal cylinder, and the best character visual acuity in this eye improved to 2020, and I had a follow-up of about 18 months. This is the pre, post lenticule, and the post topography guided PRK maps. You can see that the keratoconus in the last map almost looks like a regular astigmatism. Looking at the higher order aberrations, uh, you can see that the, both the total aberrations and the coma show a slight reduction after the lenticular implantation, but there is a significant reduction after the topography guided laser revelation and the corneal cross thinking. This is again one of the patient's five year follow up photographs. Uh, you can see that the cornea looks absolutely clear and the visual acuity has been maintained at 2020. So this is the pre and post lenticule. You can see that there is a significant amount of central flattening. And that's the uh, topographic guided PRK that was planned for this patient, along with the accelerated cross-linking. This is the map in 2016, and this is the follow-up in 2021. And if you look at the keratometry values, they have remained fairly stable without any progression of keratoconus. And the visual acuity also has been maintained at 2020. And you can see that the higher order aberrations also uh, are quite low, both the total aberrations and the coma. That's the difference map, pre-lenticule and the five-year follow-up. And you can see that there is a, quite a significant amount of central flattening in this case. That's the overall clinical details. If we look at pre and post lenticule, the best spectacle corrected visual acuity, there is some improvement, but not statistically significant difference. But if you look at the post topography guided PRT, you find that the best spectacle corrected visual acuity along with the uncorrected visual acuity, both show significant improvement. And if you look at the, uh, the steep K, that also shows a reduction compared to the pre and post lenticule. And if you look at the higher order aberrations, you find that both the total and the coma are significantly lower following the topographic guided PRK and the accelerated cross linking. That's the overall uh, summary. You can see that the uh, both the unaided and best spectacle corrected visual acuity has improved uh, following the topographic guided PRK and the cross linking. The higher order aberrations and the coma have also shown a significant reduction. So basically, the femtosecond laser-assisted implantation of the cross-link donor lenticule containing the Bowman's layer can be safely performed under topical anesthesia. We did not see any intraoperative or postoperative complication. Uh, there is a satisfactory increase in the corneal thickness and a stable topography, which allows uh, topographic guided PRK to be performed, and following which you see improvement in both the unaided and the best spectacle corrected visual acuity, and the stable parameters at last follow up without any evidence of progression. So, in conclusion, cross link lenticular insertion followed by customized keratoablation procedure seems to improve vision, stabilize progression of keratoconus, uh, progression in eyes with moderate keratoconus without any adverse side effect. However, long-term follow-up is, nece uh, is necessary to ensure stability in a larger cohort of cases. Thank you. Thank you for a patient hearing.